the focus on democracy is different than what we uh, might define democracy in terms of the American democracy. Um, the, many people think of democracy see, as being a uh, majority rule and um, our election, when you vote, the majority wins and the majority rules and it's a de democratic process, everyone votes, that's, that's democracy. Uh, I think in progressive education, democracy is about voice and the voice of everyone in the room or the school. And that is attached to a different set of constructs. So when you're talking about democracy as a progressive educator, you're trying to activate all the voices in the room and make sure that children are hearing all the voices in the room. And there are some wonderful examples of that. Um, in the children's school, many of the classrooms have something called group meetings. And the group meetings are when the teacher during the day might have a student come up to them and say, you know, somebody's been knocking down all the blocks and I don't like that. And ideally, instead of the teacher solving that problem, the teacher says, put it on the group agenda, often a clipboard or something where they write down, you know, I want to talk about knocking down blocks. So the next day, um, student-led, that the teacher models in the beginning of the year how to lead group, and you sit in a circle wherever you may be, and the leader, the student leader, may say, group is now in session, the items on the agenda are. The items come from the children themselves. And it may be the first one is, knocking down blocks during playtime. And um, who brought that up? And a student may raise their hand and say, I brought it up, it's my concern. You give that student time to talk about that concern, and then you give the group time to react and respond. And then the group leader's job is to help problem solve and move that topic to some resolution. And sometimes it may be, okay, somebody finally says, I would like to propose that during playtime when we have our free time and someone builds a castle or a bridge or something, no one can knock that down until the next day so that the person who built it can see it standing for the next day. They may not say it quite like that, but basically you have to wait till tomorrow. And a third grader, second grader may say that. And the group leader will then say, okay, how many, do I hear a second for that and then how many people agree. And let's say 12 out of 20 or 12 out of 15 children say yes. So the majority agrees. Then you ask, okay, for those that didn't vote for it, can you live with it? And that's a part of democracy we don't always hear. The, the minority voice, can you live with the fact that we are going to keep the blocks up for another day? That is the most ripe opportunity to me of children really listening to each other because it might be then that a child says something that's really insightful that no one thought about. Well, you know, if, if everyone uses all the blocks and builds everything in the first half hour of block time, there'll be no blocks left to build the rest of block time. I have to wait till tomorrow. And the group may say, oh, you're right. Well. Maybe we need to change that. And they start to talk and realize that the minority voice has input and has value. It's not just about majority rule. And that I think is very important in having children understand the nuances of dem democracy. That's one example on a voting level. There are others where you have to really make sure that students understand that they have voice. We have town hall meetings at the children's school, and a lot of, at Moneca we have those too, where children do a larger version of that. Um, but what you want is the opportunity for children to be able to say, in, for example, a school where you have kindergartens with fifth graders sitting in a large room talking about problems and ideas, and you want that first grader to be able to have the confidence and the capacity and the skill to be able to, when the group is making a decision, and you see this, you'll see a first grader stand up and say, I don't agree with that. I think we need to do this. You know, I don't like the fact that we're doing this. And know that it's safe for them to share their idea, to be heard, to express their thoughts about why I don't agree, and that their voice is important, even though it may be a young first grade voice in the middle of an entire school and the notion that everyone else needs to respectfully listen and hear that voice. 
They may not agree with it, but it's heard, it's listened to, it's respected, it's attended to. So democracy in education and progressive education is about voice being heard, respecting others, and recognizing that the minority voice isn't always the one that you dis disregard just because it's a minority, that in fact there's some very important lessons to be learned from people who have a different perspective than the majority.